Welcome back to the homestead and we have rhubarb. We're going to harvest some rhubarb today. I have these plants over here. I need to fill this pail here which gives me enough for my juicer. Now how you harvest rhubarb is you grab it as close to the base as you can and pull. Okay. Let's do that again. Reach down to the base and pull. Just like that. So I'm going to go through the rhubarb patch and we're going to harvest it. With this batch of rhubarb, I'm actually going to make rhubarb juice. So come along with me as we harvest the rhubarb. Now I got the rhubarb harvested. We cut the leaves off. I do this outside. I just simply take a knife and cut the leaves. Put it in the pail. Cut the leaves. But what? You put the leaves in the compost, but what I do is I use it to suppress the weeds around the plant. I take the leaves and put it down there. All the way around. So I'm just going to work at getting this done. I'm going to have to take all this rhubarb in and process it. But this is the rhubarb now. You can see how we used the leaves to suppress the weeds around the rhubarb plant. Oh, you can never have too much rhubarb. So let's head into the house now. We picked the rhubarb. I washed it off. This is the end that was in the ground, we pulled it out, cut off the leaves, and now we're going to cut the end off. Now, with this batch of rhubarb, we're actually going to juice it. The nice thing about juicing is you don't have to cut very small pieces. You just want to chop it up. Get to the end. I'm going to save these. That's going to be to some of the animals. My steam juicer holds 11 pounds of rhubarb when it's right full. So we're just going to work at getting it all chopped up. Rhubarb juice is so good. You can use it as a mix. You can sweeten it, drink it however you like. Okay, 
let's get that on the stove. This is a working farm kitchen. So there's usually more than one thing going on at a time. And this is spruce tip jelly, more spruce tip jelly. With the steam juicer, there is a water portion that is filled with water. And the second half is where the juice collects. And then you have your basket of whatever you're juicing. And this one happens to be rhubarb. That's pretty full. Let's get the lid on. Yeah. Turn it on high. I'll bring it to a rolling boil. And then we're going to set the timer for 45 minutes. The water started boiling and we're producing steam. So we're going to catch the rhubarb juice. I have a second batch of rhubarb ready to go in the juicer after this first one is canned. Squish down. You can just take a masher and squish whatever fruit you are juicing at the time. So that's why we didn't have to cut it into small pieces. Now I have juice starting to accumulate here in the tube. And what you want to do is you just want to run some juice through the tube. And that will help sterilize the tube. Pour this juice back over top of the rhubarb. The rhubarb juice is done. Now I already sterilized the hose and I'm going to fill my jars to half inch. Next, I'm going to wipe the rim with white vinegar. And I'm going to put the lids on. here now. And I'm going to tighten the lids. It's very hot. <laughs> We're going to pressure can them. I got the pressure canner here ready to go, heating up. The water is hot because I don't want to shock the jars. 
I just like to make sure they are tight. There is more juice in here. We'll get it out and fill this jar up. Five pints of rhubarb juice. There is more in here, but I'm going to um, let the rest of the pulp drip into a bowl, and I have to get the second batch going. So we're going to pressure can this, and for my altitude, I'm actually at 15 pounds. So the hot rhubarb juice went into the hot jars, going into the hot, the hot pressure canner. So let's get that going. Follow the instructions for your own pressure canner. I'm going to work at getting this drained, cleaned up, and the second batch on. Okay, the pressure button has popped up, and now we're going to let it vent for 10 minutes. Now I'm putting my weight on. Follow the directions for your canner and your altitude. Mine is a 15 pound weight. So now with the dial gauge, it'll go to 15 pounds and this will start to rock. I will adjust the temperature so it's just a nice, gentle rock. So the dial gauge says 15 and my rocker has started. Okay. So it's just a nice steady rock, so I'm going to turn this down, and then you'll get used to your pressure kind of, okay, I'm going to turn the timer on for eight minutes, there we go. Okay, so the timer's gone off, what you're going to do is turn the element off. And you're going to remove the pressure canner from the heat. Now you need to leave your pressure canner sit and let it come down in pressure on its own until this little pressure knob has gone down. Do not touch the rocker, leave it. So again, let the pressure come down on its own. Once this little pressure knob drops, we'll do the next step. The pressure gauge has dropped, the pressure button has gone down, and now you can remove the weight. Leave it off for 10 minutes. The weight has been off for 10 minutes, and now we're going to remove the lid. When you remove the lid, you want to unlock it and you want to tilt it up away from you because it is hot. You don't want that to come into your face. Remove the lid and tilt it away from you. Okay. I'm not using my grabbers. You want to take it out. Now you want to put your jars. On a surface, don't put it right on the counter, either with the wood or onto a towel. You want to place your jars and you want to leave room in between the jars so that the air can circulate. There you have it. So we're going to leave these jars here to remain overnight to cool off. In the morning, we'll just remove the rings, wipe the jars down, put a label, rhubarb juice, the date, and store in a cool, dry, dark place. Hope that encourages you to do something.